What's up, watch fam? Come on in. Welcome to the new Watch Crunch Anachronist Studios. Today's format is gonna be a little different. We're gonna do a studio tour, and I'm wearing the new 38 millimeter Orient Bambino in salmon. And we're gonna use this watch sort of as an example to show you uh, how we film a complete watch YouTube video using the setup here. This is where the magic happens. Um, our little plaque we have to fix. But let me take you first over to the talking head station. There's that big dome light. Uh, we got the overhead microphone because I've always wanted to be one of the YouTubers with one of those. So I made it, mom. Um, we're on the Sony system, so that's the A7C full frame. And then this place is quite like reverby, so we had to do a lot of sound treatment. We got the carpet down low, we got the tiles on the wall, we got the blanket over here, and then also a tile up top. So we review a lot of watches. But if you ask watch YouTubers, there's a few go-tos that we would personally gift to our friends and family. And the Orient Bambino is one of those watches. Why? Because it just gets a lot of things right at a price that doesn't break the bank. So ever since they came out with the 38 millimeter version, I've been a big fan. I reviewed the cream dial last year and now they just dropped four new colors in the same format. Those are champagne, this baby blue, gray, and salmon. And it was a hard call to make when I had to choose one. They all had this pastel palette and are highly attractive. But since I reviewed the cream dial before, I went with the salmon pink one this time. Now some might consider the color effeminate, but realize that salmon dials actually have a long illustrious history and watchmaking. We'll get to that in later part of the video, but I feel like the watch fam is finally coming around to this color. Plus, the whole blue is for boy, pink is for girl thing, that only came about in like the 1940s, and that was after salmon dials were popularized. What I did struggle with with this watch was the white suede strap that it shipped on. It was a little too frou-frou for my taste, so I ditched it in lieu of this brown leather that actually originally came on my Seiko Alpinist. And Seiko actually owns Orient, so it was only appropriate. The proportions of this case is amazing. It's 38 millimeters wide, 12 and a half thick, with a saucer-like shape that's really easy on the cuffs. The lugs are short, keeping the lug to lug to a manageable 44 millimeters, and the case is mostly polished with brushed flanks down the sides. It's quite an elegant shape. The watch only has 30 meters of water resistance though, so hopefully you have no plans of going swimming with it. Let's continue the tour. Um, you might be wondering what this area is. This is our little paint studio. And our man behind the camera, Josh, he's a painter amongst other things. So Josh, why don't you hand me the camera, let him know what you do here. So I'm a contemporary artist, uh, really keeping things simple. I love colors, I love shapes. This piece is actually getting sent out to Miami. I'm gonna miss her. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for checking it out. Okay, let's head over to the main part of the studio. So this area is sort of currently untapped right now. Um, we envision maybe like a editing station over here. We don't currently have an editor. Uh, if you know one, especially if they're local to Seattle, somebody who might consider joining the team, uh, hit us up. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, this is our little chill couch, nap couch situation. Here, this is where a lot of the magic happens. Um, this is our sort of overhead handle slash macro station. And while we're here, let's take a look at the watch. Now, speaking of macro shots, I was not expecting this movement, which sits behind a display case back to stand up to the magnification, but it really isn't bad. The Caliber 6724 is from Epson. Yeah, they make more than printers. It's actually the same company as Seiko. And Orient itself was founded in 1950, but is now a subsidiary of Seiko. So whichever you spin it, this brand has plenty of history and provenance. The automatic movement checks all of your basic boxes, offering up hacking, hand winding, a quick flip date, and 40 hours of power reserve. But the highlight here is still this salmon dial. It's a Calatrava style, which was popularized by Patek Philippe and now considered the archetype of rounded dress aesthetics. Its beauty is in its simplicity and Orient really nailed the proportions. There are tapered hands, polished and beveled down the middle, pointing at elongated hour markers with a groove carved down their center. There's a small date window cut out at the three, and this all lives on an expansive salmon dial. But wait, there's more. The dial is not flat. It's actually curved towards the edges, giving it a great three-dimensional bubble-like effect. It's also not flat in terms of texture with a silvery finish that shimmers in the light. 
funny was, while I was making this video, a standing desk company reached out to me called FlexiSpot, and they wanted to contribute by mailing me this uh, E7 Plus model. You know, we need a really stable setup here, and they're like one of the more economical brands, but they said that their new four-leg model is super stable, and as you can see, it doesn't rock at all, because when we do the macros, it's like a microscope, right? Any shake you can see. Uh, this is the kitchen, where we have cooked nothing. But we commandeer the kitchen island as our fulfillment station for the anachronous zero pass straps. Um, I hope you've heard of these. They're like a NATO, but they're our proprietary design. Um, and they get rid of all the material between your wrist and your watch. But we can't do a studio tour without showing you what's in the fridge MTV style. So what's in here? Oh, right. This is our uh, watch temperature testing station. Still working. So let's actually talk a little bit about salmon dials. They actually were popularized in the 30s and 40s and they reflect the industrial age that they're from. The color reminds us of raw copper or if you're fancy, rose gold, but it's a very nostalgic color, hailing all the way back to the early 20th century. But this color is also very human because it's close to skin tones. And so it's warm and anthropomorphic, bringing life to the watch. And this is why the salmon pink color is used in a lot of dressier pieces because it's a color that speaks softly. It doesn't shout about it. So I found this watch on the Orient website for 300 bucks after a 10% discount code that flashed up on the screen. And what a thing, for that price, I gave my last Bambino to a friend and I saw him wearing it the other day and damn, it does not look like a $300 watch, especially from a few feet away. You might mistake it for something much more high end. He's got a bigger wrist, but the 38 millimeter size, as you can see, still looks great because the visual size of a watch has a lot to do with the dial to bezel ratio. And the bezel on this watch just gets out of the way. It's taken the better part of a decade for Orient to find the formula for the Bambino, but I feel like they finally nailed the form factor. So it's good to see them put more dial colors out to satisfy our appetite. No, it's by far not a perfect watch. For $300, we can't expect the world. For example, we're still getting a mineral crystal, which is easier to scratch than sapphire, especially when it's dome like this, sitting way proud of the case. But as a package, there is really not much to complain about here. Well, you've seen our podcast. Let me show you where we film it. Well, that's the tour of the studio. Thank you for coming along. You know, uh, getting the space is really a blessing because mainly the goal is to get rid of all the setting up and breaking down involved in getting every single shot. But none of this would be possible without you guys. So appreciate you watching our videos, uh, being a part of the wonderful Watch Friends community. Um, and if you have any watch related guests that you think would be good to feature on our podcast, be sure to comment below. All right, take it easy.